Hey guys, Terry Beefcake Reese. Today we're going to get started on our Corbo seat installation in our 2022 F-150. I uh, really love the Corbo seats. We put them in almost all our vehicles. I have in my 2022 or 2021 GT500, sorry. Um, I've been running them in cars for years. I just like how they uh, feel, how they sit. They bolster you in really good. Way better than the Recaros, I think. Uh, they have some wide versions too. We all know I'm a big guy, I like my gravy, but let's take you along with us for the uh, install of the seats. Basically what we're doing here, we're taking the universal slider. Uh, you can order that in a one inch slider kit. We're taking the Corbo seat and then we're using the planted brackets. Uh, Planted makes these, they have not tested them on a 20 or, or 21 or 22 F-150. So they went ahead and sent us a set to uh, test fit. Uh, we don't have the driver's side, but it being as the passenger side mounts up and we pre-measured the holes, the brackets don't look like they've changed. Now with the Corbos, the nice thing, the Corbo mounting, these brackets, they're a universal bracket. They're made for multiple seats. So the measurement from here to here fits the Corbo from left to right. In addition, you get the uh, front to rear, sorry, on your front to rear, you've got a mounting hole that's going to match up there and up there. So this universal bracket or the universal slider will just bolt directly to this with nothing else that needs to be done. So that's pretty nice. Uh, we're pretty, again, pretty happy with that uh, as far as that goes. Everything seems to be fitting up nice. Can't wait to get this interior done. So we're test fitting the Corbo seats in now. So here is the stock seats in the all the way down position. That's typically about where I ride at uh, in the lower position, especially once we race the truck and I'm wearing a helmet, that'll give some clearance on the roof line there. So you can see about the distance that you have there from the uh, flat of the seat and the edge with the bolstering. I'm gonna walk over to the other side. So this is with the Corbo universal slider in the planted bracket, which I'll show you all that individually. So this is basically where the seat is going to sit. If you look, it's going to sit just a little bit lower. Now you won't have a height adjustability. You do still have forward and backward because we are using a universal slider uh, down here on the bracket. But we set the brackets in here, even though they're not bolt, uh, welded or bolted in, uh, which they'll only need to be bolted in. You can weld them if you want. Everything fits pretty good. So at the front, it sits a little bit lower. The back drops a little bit more to tuck you into the seat a little bit better. But I think the height overall is going to be perfect. Uh, I'm not disappointed with it at all. If you wanted to back up a little bit higher, you could always put a, uh, a spacer in on the uh back there just to raise it up a little bit to give you a little bit more angle with the back. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the uh, seats. I'm gonna show you how we got here. We'll be adding the, uh, like a lariat, like a center console with the uh, center shifter and deleting the column shifter later on. We'll also be updating to the 12 inch screen. So once we get that center shifter in there with these Corbo seats, I think the interior is just gonna be banging on this thing. Uh, the seats are going to look really, really nice. If we get it going fast enough that we end up adding a roll bar, we'll have the ability to uh, put the five-point harness through, and that'll fit really nice. One of the things we do on the newer vehicles, I've been going ahead, and I pull the entire harness. Other than on the passenger seat, the uh, sensor here, this one will just end up unclipping. Uh, you don't move that sensor. That's not going to do any good. Um, you'll still get the airbag light for not having the airbag but at least you'll get rid of all the other uh, seat belt and everything. We'll pull the uh, factory seat belt and that'll bolt right into the side of the bracket and we'll have everything that we need to install the seats. We've got everything out and we've got the uh, seat belt off. Now, the thing I noticed with the Corbeau universal bracket, say for the Mustang, this hole is the exact same size as the bolt hole and it actually threads in. With this uh, planted bracket, it's slightly larger and it doesn't look like it's really going to be thick enough to bolt. Um, you know, we could probably get a washer on there and it'd be and it'd be close, but I'm probably going to go with something just a little bit, a bolt, a nut just a little bit bigger to put on the back of that just to hold the uh, seat belt on. We've got this all tightened down. We still have uh, angle just like the factory. 
So you get a little bit of movement here. If you want it to go down, it goes up uh, probably 80 degrees or so, 40, 70 degrees, but enough to where you can grab it and get it around. We could always break this tab off if we want. I don't know if I want to. I'm going to wait and see what the seat belt position is, but I think that's going to be a pretty decent position for the seat belt once you, once you bring it around. So I think that's going to be perfect. Again, on the passenger side, you're going to have three, three plugs, basically. One of those is for the airbag, one of those is for the seat sensor, and one of those is for the seat belt. Uh, we will have the airbag light. Uh, the seat belt typically doesn't set too much. We will have the airbag light pretty consistently, which is not a big deal. It's a, it's a little tiny light. It's like a seat belt light almost. Uh, but the seat belt light won't be on, which will be the nicest thing about moving the harness uh, into the uh, bracket. All right. So once we got everything actually fitted up, we found a couple things. With the wide version of the seats, I went with the wide ones. The seat belt bracket uh, actually pushes up on the seat. However, the seat has a little room because of the inside ovals to slide left to right. We did bend it out just a hair, still has clearance on the console. We're going to use the factory button head bolt on the inside. That way, if it slides against the seat, it doesn't cut anything. So we're going to go back to that shorter stub on the outside. The other thing, when we were test fitting the brackets, uh, we originally got nuts and bolts, but these brackets actually sit the opposite direction so that you can uh, pull up on the seat to make it slide. So you actually use the same type of bolts. So we went back to the hardware store, got some different nuts. All right, guys, we've got it all buttoned up with the uh, brackets. I mean, the install really looks pretty clean. The seats look nice. Again, we're going to be doing the center console with one of the OEMs. So once we get that factory center console in the black, that's going to look real nice. But I just, you know, especially with, since we'll be drag racing the truck, you get a lot more support with Corbo seats. Again, we went with the wide ones. Makes it a little tight with the seat belt brackets, but we made all that work. I think it looks good. Again, we have a ton of different options in the Corbos. These are wide. We have the regular version of LG, but we have eight, 10 different options that they offer. So if you're looking for something like this, um, as far as the weights. So compared to the factory manual seats, um, you would actually gain four pounds just because of the heavier bracketry and everything like that. With the power seat on the driver's side, we lost four pounds. So if you had... Uh, power seat on both sides and you did this setup you'd lose about 12 pounds i know some guys were asking about the weight so i wanted to throw that out there too but again anything you need hit us up beefcake racing and we'll get you dialed in so one of the little things that really clean up the look of the trucks if you look back here our friends at rough country they sent us a set of their uh rear wheel well liners it's one of those things if you come and you look at the truck here front looks pretty clean but back here it's just all open and you see everything. So we're going to put these uh, Rough Country wheel liners in. I think all you need is a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, it's going to go together pretty quick, pretty nice, and it should look real good. So we've got my man Phil here finishing up the install. If you look, this one's popping in. I'll bring you around the other side, let you take a look. All installed up. This side's already done, took maybe five minutes just really cleans the look of the truck up looks so much better again these are very inexpensive uh, i think it's a great mod if yours didn't come with any factory wheel liners cleans it up a ton again makes it look a lot like the uh front just a nice clean look hit us up for yours beefcakeracing.com <laughs>